The Luminaries is a new novel by American YA fantasy author Susan Dennard. This is an urban fantasy novel that takes place in an alternative modern day, where all across the world, for thousands of years now, there have been these enormous sleeping spirits. And these spirits, while they're sleeping, produce monsters called nightmares. These nightmares flood forests around the world. And the monsters are recognisably folkloric. You've got werewolves and vampires and banshees and more. And over time, these sleeping spirits have appeared. There's one in Italy, one in Russia, one in Mexico, and the newest one is in the United States. And that's where our story takes place, in a town called Hemlock Falls. In order to stave off these nightmares, there is an international group of people called the Luminaries. They're a kind of cult of warriors who live near to these sleeping spirits and do battle with the nightmares that the spirits produce. They go into the forests, they hunt the spirits, and they keep ordinary people safe. Our protagonist, Winnie, is a 16-year-old girl who is part of the Luminaries group in Hemlock Falls, USA. Before I go any further, I couldn't stop thinking while I was reading this book that what we basically have here is the TV show Supernatural. If you replace the cast of Supernatural with the cast of Greta Gerwig's Lady Bird, because this is an awkward coming of age story about teenage angst and romance set in a world similar to that of Buffy the Vampire Slayer or Supernatural. And there's a little bit of Hunger Games, because this is a YA fantasy novel, mixed into it as well. Because the forests where the nightmares grow and haunt can be treated like the arenas that you see in the Hunger Games, where the hunters go into the forest and they have to do battle and they have to survive. And the story of this particular novel is about our protagonist becoming a hunter of nightmares, and to do so she has to pass a series of trials where she has to first kill one of the nightmares, second she has to spend a full night there, and third the final trial is a mystery. So you've got a closed off arena full of dangerous things that she has to survive. Hunger Games. You've got a world where the supernatural folkloric creatures of myth are real. Supernatural. And you've got some angsty awkward teenagers that really reminded me of the cast of Lady Bird. If you like those things, you'll like this. And I really feel like I need to specify here that I am not an expert in YA literature. I don't read a lot of YA, because I'm an adult. And this novel did remind me why I don't read a lot of YA, and that's because it's very formulaic. Everything here is very predictable, the twists and turns are easy to see, nothing took me by surprise. Again and again, I turned a page and went, this is about to happen, and then it happened. It's wonderfully formulaic. But, while I do consider that uninteresting, I don't consider it bad, because everything is well executed. Even though everything is predictable, it's still well done. It's still well written, it's still well plotted, it's still well paced, the characters are likeable. I wouldn't say there's much intrigue, because there's not enough mystery, there's not enough payoff, you know what's going to happen. By the halfway point, I knew exactly how this book was going to end. I wasn't sure if it was going to have a sequel or not, and so I thought, right, if it's setting up for a sequel, it'll end like this. If it's not, it'll end like this. And that's exactly what happened. But that doesn't make it a bad novel by any means, because everything that Susan Dennard does here is solid. Her characterization is good, as I said, her plotting and pacing is good, she uses wonderfully descriptive language, the character interactions are fun, but they're characters that we've seen before. As I've already mentioned Ladybird, I need to specify that our protagonist's ex-friend and love interest is absolutely, in almost every single way, Timothy Chalamet's character from Ladybird. She's a social outcast, who everyone looks at with suspicion and confusion, and he is a dangerous bad boy biker dude, and he's in a local band. It's just Ladybird, it's just an awkward coming-of-age story. She literally fancies the bad boy who's the only guy their age who has a car and he's in a band. Like, it's all been done before. But as I keep saying, none of that is bad because it's really well done. Formulas are fine. Don't reinvent the wheel. Just refine it, make it better, make it more efficient. And Susan Dennard does all of that. 
So it's hard for me to avoid criticizing it because I like my books to be more experimental and thought provoking and literary, but there's nothing to complain about really. Everything just works, everything is solid. The thing that pushes the plot forward is the fact that our protagonist, Winnie, has been cast out from the luminaries. It turns out that four years ago, her father was revealed to be a traitor. He was actually working for another group, the enemy group of the luminaries. He had been married to Winnie's mum for 20 years, they had two children together, there was no reason to suspect, and yet he was in fact a spy. And... Winnie's mother and her two children are also punished for this. After their father is cast out, the three of them are also punished by being banned from doing luminary work. So their mother has to go get a regular job in town, and Winnie and her brother are suddenly much poorer than they were, because luminary work pays really well. I don't know who pays them, but someone does. And they are kind of shunned. Winnie still has to work as a corpse cleaner, where every morning, after hunters have gone into the forest and killed a bunch of supernatural things, Winnie and a group of other teenagers go in and clean up the bodies of those things and of any victims that didn't survive the night. But when she turns 16, Winnie is allowed to partake in the trials that will turn her into a hunter and reinstate her family as members of the Luminaries. And so that's the thing that pushes us forward. Now, I mentioned that I don't know who pays the luminaries, and this is something that I can criticize about the book, is a lack of world building. I personally take issue with world building on both sides of the argument. Sometimes you read a fantasy novel, whether it be adult or YA, and you think there's too much world building here. It's sort of the midi-chlorian situation. You don't need midi-chlorians. The force is fine, let it be mysterious, right? That applies to so much science fiction and fantasy, especially fantasy. And Star Wars is fantasy. Sometimes you don't need to explain a magic system. Sometimes you don't need to have pages and pages of background lore and history and political build-up. Sometimes less is more. Other times, you read a story where less isn't more, and in fact, we needed a little bit more to contextualize and ground the story and answer questions that the audience is going to have. And I had a lot of questions. Who pays the luminaries? It mentions that luminary work, hunting these monsters, pays well. Who pays them? Is this a government thing? I don't know. There's also the fact that there are these red bollards, or torches, barriers, things that line the perimeter of the forest to keep the supernatural creatures from getting out. What are they? Are they magic? Are they a piece of technology? Who put them there? Who invented them? I just wanted to know this stuff. There's a lot of details about the lore that I wanted to understand. The sleeping spirits are a great example of less is more. I don't know what they are, where they came from, why more of them pop up over time, this is a great mystery. I really like that. I don't want to know what these strange sleeping spirits are and why their dreams create supernatural nightmare things. That's great. Leave that a mystery. Because that's just fun. That's just imaginative and strange and it's fun to try to figure it out for yourself. That's a great example of less is more. But there are so many details about the luminaries as a group. Where they came from, who funds them, how they work as a part of wider, larger society that I really wanted to know because it doesn't quite work. There's a lot of friction in the story when it comes to the existence of the luminaries versus ordinary people. And you see this a lot. You see a lot of stories about secret groups, government agencies, whatever, who have to exist in the real world but stay secret. And I'm now thinking about the Men in Black and the fact that they have that thing that wipes people's memories, that flashy thingy. That's great. That's a great narrative tool to explain away how they remain secret. There's nothing like that here, and I think that the novel needed something like that. So when it comes to its world building, I was left quite unsatisfied. There's a lot more that I needed in order to make the world feel like it could exist. To make it feel real for it to justify its own existence. But I keep coming back to the fact that I enjoyed this novel. I enjoyed the characters and their relationships. I enjoyed the plot and the narrative. I like Winnie as a character. 
I like the awkward friendship slash budding romance that exists between her and her love interest. There's a little bit of queer inclusivity in it, which feels a bit forced, but at the same time, I'm grateful it was there. Which is, by the way, just the fact that Winnie's brother is gay. It's good. It's a well-made piece of YA fantasy fiction. Everything, more or less, works, except for the gaps and holes in the world building. But narratively, it works. Susan Dennard is a great writer. In terms of dialogue and description and execution and plotting and pacing, that's all good. There's no cringe dialogue. Everything is imaginative and it's brought to life in a colorful way that isn't too exotic and ridiculous. It feels grounded. The writing is solid. It will not shake the world. It will not redefine the genre. It will not ask any bigger questions. It's not doing anything new, but it's certainly a great example of how you refine a formula and make it entertaining and fun. And that's all it needs to be. The Luminaries is a really fun, engaging piece of urban fantasy, and I enjoyed it. It's all right. If you like YA fantasy, if you like urban fantasy, if you like the TV show Supernatural and the film Lady Bird, and you want to see them smushed together, you should read The Luminaries. It's all right. Subscribe for books.